Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. Uh, as you can see the attic is cleared again from the uh, 2022 layout video. Everything is in a closet again. And uh, now it's time to work on the Automated Container Terminal again and this time we're going to finish it. I'm not going to do any in-between projects. Um, it's now just starting now we're going to finish the whole thing. And uh, we're not going to stop until I have shot the main videos and with the main videos I mean the main video and it will be of course a fail video probably since I'm automating stuff and uh, it never goes like you want it to go well here what you can see here is the red crane which I worked on a few years ago I need to stack it up again build it up again it's just in a few small small pieces looks worse than it actually is it has been a storage in uh, in an uh, angle of the attic where no one uh, normally comes except some kids <laughs> and probably I uh, tipped it over uh, but not very big deal and uh, once I got this uh, up and running again uh, we continue with the blue crane and the blue crane is a story on itself yes I left the blue crane where it is right now just in an angle where no one supposed to be coming <laughs> and um, it was parked here it was nice in one piece and then uh, <clears throat> on a certain uh, point my girlfriend needed something uh, out of the drawer so she uh, opened the drawer and she thought that the crane would move along to the right when opening the drawer yes it did move along to the right but only the top side of course and not the bottom side so it completely collapsed. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm not very happy with this. <laughs> the problem is <clears throat> that this will take me, I don't know, four to six to eight hours or something to, to rebuild and, and make it work again. Because there are some alignments that need to be correct. And probably I need to align everything again in the software to make it all work uh, as precisely as it was before so yeah well that's that's just not looking looking forward to it actually <laughs> but hey um it it has happened and um, it's i just need to fix it i can fix it it just takes time patience and i wish i could just continue with the red crane instead of the uh, blue crane all right after a few hours I believe three or four or something everything is back into place with some adjustments I also had to rebuild a bit the uh, compressor which is already enabled the air tanks are filled and uh, we're about to uh, enable the crane and see what it does but before that I want to mention a worry that I have and it's about the uh, offset that is in the system that you see here when I grab this point here you see there is an offset well that side is being kept into place by the uh, come on man, focus by the uh, support that you see here and um, so the the offset isn't on that side it's only at this side and there could be an offset compared to the last configuration so there could be an offset compared with the uh, there could be a, an offset compared with the last build. Um, this time I used a, uh, how do you call this, a level to, uh, to actually make it completely straight like that. So everything is straight, but maybe before it was not. And it was uh, one step to the left or one step to the right, something like that. And that definitely has a result on how the crane is positioned in this direction. So there could be an offset. Now, we're gonna enable the crane right now. I do not know which program is inside. I believe it's uh, still the shoveling program with the shoveling of the container. But to protect the crane that I just built up, um, I'm not using the containers right now. I'm just gonna see if the whole system works or not. So we're gonna enable it in the power station here. And then uh, probably I have to that's not good 
There should be power here. I believe. Oh yeah, that was. There we go. Now let's see what it does. Yeah, this is the scanning procedure, and everything seems to work just fine. I don't know if it's gonna pick up containers now, as it has. Okay. What is? Maybe it's a bit off. Yeah, it's off. You see that it's off by one or two studs to the right. So I need to reprogram uh, those coordinates to make it. Uh, Correct again. <laughs> but according to me, it shouldn't do anything right now as it definitely has measured that there are no containers in the yard. But somehow it senses something or something like that. So I have to check that out as well if, it, if the, the old distance measurement on the uh, bottom of the crane works just fine. So uh, that's what I'm gonna work on right now. All right, I'm done calibrating the whole thing. I had to put in all the new coordinates. And with that, I mean what you see here on the screen. These are all coordinates corresponding to the different positions of the containers. Uh, the C is the container yard, the M is the monorail. And as you can see, there are some differences. For example, this should be theoretically the same number because it's the same x distance but yes, you can see there are some differences here and there here's 270 260 285 those kind of small distance uh, distances make up the uh, the thing that it works or doesn't work it's it's a kind of offset that that I need to correct inside the software which I did now if I did my work correctly and I hope so we can move some containers now so I uploaded the uh, program, not yet, I'm gonna do that now. It'll first scan the containers, so it knows how many containers are on which spot. And after that it should be moving some containers. So as you can see it's getting all the containers. It says successful. Well, let's have a look. Now it should start the program to shovel some containers. There we go. Picking it up. And then it picks randomly a place where it puts it down. Where it does space. Oh, look at that. That is very nice. It's very precise. Oh, that's one really off. Can you see that? It's off by one stud. So there it's gonna need some adjustments. Ooh, also that one is not going very well. Hmm. The first one went very well. After that, it was a bit messy. Well, as you can see, for the last container, for example, there's a gap. And the, the problem with this is that... Um, yeah, I don't know how to solve this very well. The problem is, if I leave it like this, the, the gap will, the offset will uh, amplify a bit each time it, it's moving containers. So I need to get it as precise as possible. And the first container went very well. This was the uh, this one over here. And as you can see, it's almost straight on top of the others. That's what I want to see. How I'm going to solve this, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping it would just work perfectly as I was uh, also programming some additional code to make it a bit more precise but um, I need to have a look at that right now I'm at almost 2000 lines of code so that's uh, <laughs> that's a lot of code going through
All right, now as you can see, it did a pretty decent job. There is some offset with the upper uh, in the upper left corner. You see that it's uh, it's a bit to the left, but yeah. And you see also here, this one here is also a bit off over here, but nothing seriously. And um, I think it's approved because it has now done five shuffle uh, routines in uh, without calibrating between. And normally it it would do just three containers. It has now done fifteen containers. So normally, what I'm basically going to do is. Um, move three containers to the monorail or from the monorail and then it goes to the initial position again calibrating the motors and then the whole sequence can start again so this gives me confidence that the whole thing will just work just fine all right um, this crane is done the red crane is for uh, the next episode so uh, thank you for watching i hope you liked it and hope to see you uh, next time bye